I'm Mr. O, here with another oh, wow. moment at the Children's Museum of Houston. When there's a disease outbreak, people can get a little panicked, but I find educating myself on facts helps me make more rational decisions. So let's educate ourselves a little bit on how infectious diseases spread and what we can do to prevent it. The first thing to realize about infectious diseases is they all follow the same basic chain of infection. The chain of infection is a cycle of events that keeps an infectious disease going. We start with a pathogen existing in a reservoir, a place where the pathogens can grow, or a host. The word pathogen may sound scary, but all it means is a virus, bacterium, or other microorganism that causes disease, which may still sound a little scary. Back to the reservoir. This could be an animal where the pathogen lives until it transfers to humans, a place like water or soil, a dirty surface, or already in a human host. The pathogen hangs out here until it finds a portal of exit, which is the way the pathogen leaves its reservoir host, such as a sneeze. The next step is its mode of transmission. In other words, once the pathogen leaves its host, how does it find its way to a new host? There are several modes of transmission. For example, direct contact with an infected person. Or fomites, which means an infected object. Or, of course, there's inhalation. <laughs> or ingestion. <laughs> and, of course, bugs. <laughs> and several others. But no matter the mode of transmission, and some pathogens have more than one, it all comes down to them finding a portal of entry. In other words, a way into a new host's body. Our skin is actually pretty good at blocking pathogens, but pathogens can still find their way inside your body through cuts in the skin or inhalation or touching your hands to your mouth or your nose or your ears or your eyes if they already have germs on them. And once those germs are inside, it infects a susceptible host. In other words, the pathogen begins to replicate. That's when the host starts feeling sick which takes us back to the beginning of the cycle, where the pathogens are ready to jump to a new host, hopefully before the current host body kills all the pathogens. Fortunately, you can stop the chain of infection. All you have to do is break one or more of the links. For example, make sure to wash your hands regularly with soap and water for at least 20 seconds to properly kill and remove germs, especially after going to the bathroom and before you eat. If you're sick, stay home until you're fever-free for at least 24 hours. And to stop the spread of germs, make sure to cough or sneeze into your elbow. Why? Well, there are many reasons why we sneeze. It could be allergies or something's just tickling your nose, or it could be an infectious disease. Rhinoviruses that cause the common cold, influenza viruses that cause the flu, and coronaviruses like the one that causes COVID-19 are all upper respiratory infections. Their main point of exit is through a cough or a sneeze. A cough or sneeze is more than just an exhalation of air. It's also a release of liquid droplets. If you're sick, those droplets contain pathogens like the rhinovirus, influenza virus, or coronavirus, depending upon what disease you have. Anyone who comes in contact with those droplets, whether inhaling them or touching a surface they landed on and then touching their face, can get sick too. This may leave you wondering, how far can those droplets travel? Well, let's look at this graphically. Remember, science is fun, but it can also be dangerous. So always have a responsible adult helping you. We're gonna look graphically at what happens when you sneeze. For this, you'll need a long sheet of paper or a lot of shorter pieces of paper, a spray bottle with colored water, a couple drops of food coloring and some water will do the trick, and a ruler or measuring tape. Now, while food coloring will work, I got this brand new black light, so I'm using a special ink that will glow under it, because it will look cool. And I'm a geek. First, roll the sheet of paper out, cut it, and place it onto the floor. Step up to the edge of the paper. Hold the bottle so the tip of the nozzle is directly over the edge of the paper. Finally, spray the bottle, but don't move. 
give the droplets a moment to land onto the paper. Lay down the tape measure. How far did the droplets go? And where are the most droplets landing? If we look at the droplets, we see that they traveled as far as six feet. But there's this big grouping from about 23 inches to 57 inches. That's where the most particles land. Even though a single droplet can travel far, most of the infectious particles are closer to the source. Obviously, this is just a model. However, real sneezes are measured using a very similar process, and most doctors recommend that you stay at least six feet away from any coffer or sneezer. The other thing to keep in mind is the space around that cough or sneeze, the zone of the sneeze. So in there you might have cell phones, cups, plates, food, and other things, all of which that would get covered in the particles that are dropping out of the sneeze. So always remember to cover up your sneeze. So what's going to happen then if we actually cover up our mouth and nose when we sneeze? If we cover our nose and mouth, or in this case the spray bottle, with our elbow, we can see we don't get many particles at all compared to the uncovered sneeze. They just go out a little ways. So why are we told not to use our hands? If we use our hand, we still stop most of the droplets, but now our hand is covered in them, which means everything and everyone we touch is getting covered in germs. That's why doctors strongly urge you to sneeze into your elbow if you don't have a tissue, not your hands. So it turns out there are many ways to break the chain of infection. Washing your hands more thoroughly, not touching your face, and of course if you're sick, staying home. So stay calm and remember, please don't spread disease. Dab when you have to cough or sneeze. <coughs> this has been another Oh Wow Moment from the Children's Museum of Houston. We hope your mind can come out to play. <laughs>